Danis is a travel manager. He's the founder of awardplanners.com. Danis' obsessions are aviation, travel, and more specifically using airline miles and credit card points to evaluate and elevate travel experience. In his spare time, Dennis is practicing martial arts and has a black belt in judo and purple belt in jiu-jitsu. Give it up for Dennis. Dennis, I'm gonna stop sharing so you can take over. All right, uh, well guys, I hope you all can see me from my fabulous airplane. Uh, so I'm gonna, so this is my first time sharing, um, you know, Zoom presentation. So I'm gonna uh, try to do it right now. Hold on a second. Um, <laughs> all right, let's begin. All right, share. All right, so I, I really hope you guys can um, see my presentation. So, and uh, well, if not, I hope it's gonna be all right. All right, so uh, let's uh, uh, start from the beginning. So, first of all, uh, Katya, I wanna say thank you so much for the invite. I, I didn't know about this conference and I'm honored to, to be the first uh, ever speaker at this famous world event. So, thank you. Uh, so I, by this time, uh, I think everyone had enough of self-isolation. Uh, we've been sitting at home for a few weeks, and uh, I, I want to talk about something more inspirational, uh, and specifically more about travel. And uh, since like uh, everyone these days uh, have uh, credit card points, uh, like uh, earning credit cards, like American Express or Chase Sapphire, I think like 99% of people have them. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure um, like 90% of people uh, have uh, airline miles as well. Uh, maybe you had some flights, you know, booked uh, in the past. Maybe you have some uh, airline miles somewhere. Uh, and uh, I think uh, less people have uh, hotel credit card, uh, hotel points as well. Uh, I know. Um, our uh, speaker Nick had some before, so um, I'm gonna dedicate some stuff as well, the hotel points as well. Uh, so uh, I just want to cover today a very small area of um, miles and points gain. Uh, you can talk uh, for hours about you know all those miles and points and how to maximize it, but I, I just picked the one topic today. I just wanted to share some notes about. Um, uh, you know, using uh, miles at this current uh, uh, situation, and hopefully it will inspire someone to book on their next trip, and specifically with miles and points. Um, so uh, let's uh, begin uh, from, uh, uh, I guess, from the introduction. So you probably know uh, my name is Dennis, and uh, I'm very good with using frequent flyer miles and credit card points. And uh, my obsession started back uh, back in 2009. So I started to work as a travel agent uh, at this uh, company back in 2009. And uh, at the <laughs> it was a very good year, 2009. Barack Obama was the president. Uh, he was just elected. Um, iPhone 3GS was the best phone <laughs> in the world, and um, uh, we were selling airline tickets from the uh, uh, global distribution system called the Worldspan, and it looked like this, this blue screen, what you can see all in the presentation, and uh, by the way, it looks exactly the same 10 years later, nothing changed. Uh, so we have to type in a bunch of commands there. Uh, so um, I, I was working with uh, uh, this company for, for a while and kind of got my experience um, uh, with clients. And um, after a few years, I um, uh, noticed the trend. So a lot of my uh, customers were asking about 
frequent flyer miles and credit card points. And uh, they uh, may assume for some reason what travel, all the travel agents have a lot of experience with them and everyone knows how to use them in the best possible way. Um, but honestly, most of travel agents, they don't. Uh, we know how to find you know, cheap tickets, but the miles and points, not, not exactly. And, um, and so I, uh, this kind of started my obsession with miles and points. And um, I, I decided to create a simple website uh, just to kind of test my idea and do some consulting services on the side. And uh, this is uh, the design from 2012, my, my first uh, award planners website. And I paid uh, $100 to an Indian freelancer and uh, obtained this, uh, this gem of a design <laughs> from the guy. Um, and um, so this is basically how I started. Um, so uh, let's uh, move on to the travel stuff. Um, so this is uh, the cabin, uh, what I flew back in December, uh, with American Airlines uh, first class uh, using, uh, I believe it was around 50,000 points uh, and $5 in tax and fees. This was my Christmas trip to New York and uh, those wonderful seats uh, didn't cost me a lot. So it was very nice. Um, uh, so, uh, one of the most uh, asked questions, uh, you know, from uh, our clients uh, to me, it's uh, it's basically, Dennis, when is the best time to book your tickets? Um, uh, pretty much, this is uh, like the second uh, second thing what people ask uh, after how much does the service cost. And uh, before coronavirus, I, I would answer it pretty much the same. Um, uh, book as far as possible or uh, as close uh, as possible to departure. And I'm going to elaborate on, uh, on those, um, uh, on this advice. Um, so generally airlines, uh, they open up award seats uh, 360 days in advance. Uh, but it's not always the case. Um, some airlines uh, like Qantas and Cathay Pacific, they're more predictable. Um, other airlines like United, Delta, American, they are less predictable because they employ this new uh, revenue management system and uh, they don't want to release all the Saver awards 360 days in advance and uh, there's nothing going to be left for other members to uh, to enjoy later um, so uh, sometimes people call 360 days in advance and there are no award seats available so it doesn't mean what um, someone beat you uh, to that seat uh, it just most air airlines they just kind of play a game they release it little by little um, so just kind of you have to wait and see what pops up. Uh, so if you have this luxury of booking your trip, you know, one year in advance, uh, you know, when airlines open their schedules, this is a great time to book. So try to do it as, uh, as early as possible. Uh, but of course, it's, uh, you know, we're, we're not retired, we all have jobs, and uh, we sometimes we have to book maybe like four, six months in advance when we made our plans. And uh, at this time, it's usually harder to find saver seats, uh, but uh, still possible. Uh, but even if you don't see anything available with your you know, preferred airline, or you see it you know, costs a crazy number of miles, um, I would still recommend to book at least something so to kind of lock, uh, lock those dates in and just kind of work uh, from, uh, from there and just kind of keep uh, monitoring the situation. Uh, uh, because, uh, you know, it's pretty cheap uh, to change an award ticket. Uh, usually uh, change fees, um, so let's say if you want to change a date or uh, change your routing, 
um, airlines charge maybe like 30, 50 dollars. Um, I'm talking mostly about British Airways, so some Asian carriers like Singapore Airlines or Japan Pacific. Um, US-based airlines like American, Delta, uh, they charge a little bit more, maybe a hundred, hundred fifty, two hundred dollars. This is probably the maximum uh, fee what I saw for the change of a word ticket. Uh, but it still um, kind of gives you still visible uh, number for the for the change. And uh, also one little trick. Um, uh, sometimes uh, airline uh, does a schedule change. So, for example. Let's say you booked originally like nine months in advance flight from San Francisco to Frankfurt and then Frankfurt to Moscow with a two hour layover. And a um, couple of months after this, um, let's say Lufthansa Airlines decided to change their flight from San Francisco to Frankfurt and it would depart two hours later. So you will have a misconnect in Frankfurt and um, automatically you're eligible to change it for free and they would give you like whatever routing you know it's available they would open seats for you um, and uh, let's touch uh, uh, something about uh, booking uh, flights just a few days before departure um, it might sound counterintuitive but you will be surprised how much uh, award availability there is just a few days in advance. Uh, I know some people, they just, you know, book their trips like one or two days before departure because there are just so many, you know, great options available. Um, and uh, and the, using uh, miles for last minute trips uh, also will save you a lot of money uh, because, um, for example, a uh, business or first class ticket uh, from San Francisco to Hong Kong could cost like ten, fifteen thousand dollars because there is no um, advanced purchase uh, uh, requirement met. But with miles, you will have those great options and saver uh, awards uh, available. So don't hesitate. Maybe if you can plan it like spontaneous trips, you will find a lot of different options with miles. Um, so let's uh, uh, let's go uh, to the uh, topic of today's uh, uh, talk. I would say it's uh, um, you know booking your trips while you know being in a lockdown uh, because of the coronavirus, and uh, you know, I'm gonna just kind of share a couple of uh, my uh, uh, couple of uh, inspirations uh, here. Uh, so why, why do you think, uh, why I think it's the best time to book uh, right now? Uh, so first of all, uh, everyone, we are now super bored. We have a lot of time to research and uh, dreaming about your next trip uh, could, you know, lift your spirits. Just, uh, just even thinking about uh, going somewhere, like lying on the beach and flying in business class or economy, um, just will help you um, emotionally. Um, the the second uh, reason I would give is um, uh, a lot of people already cancel their plans uh, for pretty much for the whole 2020, and uh, for maybe for September and October. Uh, for four months, uh, what I think uh, government will open our uh, borders. Um, there are a lot of available seats. I I like to keep um, uh, I like to uh, keep in mind uh, this flight from LA to London, which is usually an extremely popular flight, and it's really hard to get uh, the nonstop seats in advance. But uh, take a look at this uh, chart of, on this screenshot, what I uh, attach here. Uh, pretty much you'll see maybe like 20 different dates available in September because the planes are pretty much empty and you can snag, you know, saver economy, saver business uh, on many routes, like nonstop flights. And it's, uh, it's a great availability. Um, 
another reason I would give is um, uh, more, most of uh, uh, revenue tickets, and I'll, I'll um, describe revenue ticket is, uh, as a ticket what you are paying with cash. Um, so most uh, economy tickets, uh, the revenue tickets, are non-refundable. Um, I would probably say in business class as well. Uh, but with, uh, uh, with our um, shaky uh, economy, economical situation right now, uh, airlines, they're not giving refunds at all. Uh, you're just going to get the voucher and for the future use, you're not going to get any refunds back. Uh, but with miles, it's much easier to, uh, to get a refund. So you'll get miles back and uh, the tax is paid, uh, no problems, no questions asked. And uh, in, the, in the last uh, few weeks, all I was doing, it's mostly refunds and uh, changes of uh, uh, different flight, flights. And um, with uh, most airlines, they would give uh, miles and the refunds for points for free, so they would waive a, a change fee as well. So yeah, it's a, it's a, you know instead of using uh, your cash uh, reserves, I will totally burn some miles and use your points and miles. Um, so uh, just uh, let's uh, just kind of sum up: um, uh, save your cash for you know everyday life and just book your. Uh, travel with points and miles. That's that's my take on this uh, situation with uh, coronavirus. Um, and uh, let's uh, just kind of uh, circle uh, about one one thing. Um, a lot of people ask when it makes sense to uh, use your miles uh, versus paying uh, cash for a ticket. Uh, it's uh, basically a pretty simple uh, calculation. Uh, so, uh, like I, I usually go uh, on uh, like Google Flights or Kayak or Orbitz and uh, just trying to check the uh, price of the regular pay ticket. And then I kind of compare it to the number of miles, what um, this uh, flight requires, and uh, just uh, calculate uh, cents per mile. Um, and see if it's worth uh, using miles or, or not using miles. Uh, there are uh, different values for each airline, for each uh, mile, and uh, you can find pretty much uh, all those values on the Points Guy website, on Flyer Talk, and they constantly change. So um, Delta could cost 1.1 cent, uh, Lufthansa can be 2.2, uh, it really depends. And uh, uh, let's uh, just uh, kind of show, uh, let me show you the example of um, calculating, you know, cents per mile um, in a real life example. So uh, let's say if uh, we are looking at a domestic uh, ticket would cost uh, you know, 25,000 miles, uh, but this, the same uh, ticket uh, as a revenue ticket would cost you $500. Uh, dollars. So basically, you're getting uh, two cents per mile, which is uh, a pretty good deal uh, in this case. And I would totally use miles for this uh, flight. Uh, but uh, there are some situations when the cheap economy ticket, you know, it doesn't make um, you know any sense uh, to to book uh, to use your miles. And I would maybe save it for the future flight. Um, so, um, oh, and uh, I totally forgot about the taxes. So, so some airlines may um, add um, so-called uh, fuel surcharge to their flights, and uh, it really uh, decreases the value of your points. So I've seen uh, British Airways uh, charging uh, flights, let's say San Francisco to Moscow, they charge 60,000 miles, and uh, the the fuel surcharge is like six hundred dollars, uh, and but the the revenue ticket is uh, about the same price as the fuel surcharge, so you have to just kind of do do the math or calculate uh, cents per miles, and uh, you know just go from there. Um, so we're uh, kind of uh, running to the end of the talk, and I 
uh, I, I think I prepared a couple of uh, different use cases. Uh, I asked in our chat, uh, what would be your you know, first trip after coronavirus uh, lockdown lifted up? And um, so just gonna kind of go over a few, um, few options uh, and just we can uh, see where it makes sense to use points and where it doesn't. And uh, so the, the first uh, flight, uh, uh, Katya, <laughs> uh, uh, she wanted to go uh, to New Orleans. And I just picked uh, some random date since September just to kind of do the math uh, and uh, see what's, um, uh, is it even worth using miles enough for this trip? Um, so let's say Katya, she wants to go um, in, on the 1st of September and come back on the 10th of September. Uh, to uh, New Orleans. Uh, and uh, if we check uh, a ticket, uh, it costs about uh, $195 if we're paying cash. Uh, but uh, if we check with miles, uh, the lowest that what I was able to find with points was uh, 22,000 points and $12 in taxes and fees. So uh, the CPM here, it's pretty bad. So you're getting less than one cent per, per, my, uh, per uh, point. So I, I would probably just buy it with cash and uh, save the miles for uh, the next inspirational trip. Um, and uh, there's, uh, there was another uh, trip what uh, Zach was planning and he said he wanted to go to Istanbul. And I just wanted to kind of uh, spice things up and uh, uh, fly Zach in business class on the way to Istanbul because it's a pretty long trip and he can sleep in a light flat bed on the way there. And on the way back, it's a daytime flight. It's still gonna be all right in the car. So I, I picked this Air France routing uh, through Paris for September and um, uh, in this case, um, flying business there and coming back in economy costs us 78,000 points and $350 in tax and fees. And uh, in the same flight would cost us tw about $2,400 uh, as a paid ticket. So if Zach has 78,000 points, I think it's a pretty good deal for well, like 11 hour flight in a business class, so Wi Fi seat. I would totally use uh, points for this one. So, this one uh, for Zach. Um, and I think I still have, Katz, uh, do we have uh, one more minute for, for another flight? Or? Uh, just one more flight, I would suggest yeah. to concentrate on yeah. the last one. Yeah, thank okay. you. <laughs> All right, so I think this one. Oh, this one was for Nadia and uh, Nick. So uh, she said uh, we want to go to Mexico and uh, I just picked uh, Cabo, uh, you know, short flight uh, San Francisco to Cabo in September. Uh, looks like uh, the paid tickets, they're going for uh, around $400 uh, as a paid ticket. Uh, and uh, United, they have a, uh, United and Delta, we can do uh, a 21,000 uh, points uh, ticket with miles. So I think in this, in this case, it kind of makes sense to use miles. So as I said, uh, just use uh, CPM calculations and see what are the prices for this uh, flight with miles and points and just figure it out from there. And um, guys, I, I know this topic, I, I could go on for hours and uh, we have other uh, speakers. Um, uh, you know, coming up. So I just want to just kind of inspire you to travel and maybe uh, consider your next trip, uh, maybe fly in business class, uh, use some of your points and um, yeah, just uh, stay safe and uh, um, we'll see you on the next trip and on the airplane. Uh, thank you guys. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Dennis. I think it was the first time I, I got very close to understanding the point system and especially thank you for breaking down my next adventure to New Orleans. I'm definitely going to book it with uh, actual money, not points, so I'll save it to, to go to somewhere else like Saudi Arabia. Why not?
And great, great memes. Thank you so much. It was really fun to see your presentation. Um, I see that we have some questions in the Q&A. Um, so how about Sergey? if you're able to unmute yourself and do you want to ask your question? Yeah, if we're able to unmute ourselves. So uh, the question is, uh, is it possible to convert points from different airlines? Let's say JetBlue, Alaska. Um, so if you're asking about uh, if we can consolidate them in one account, uh, the answer is no. So you cannot really transfer it from Alaska to JetBlue because they're not uh, they are not partners. Um,